In the previous couple of lessons in this section, we've seen how to turn our data into a table, and we've also discussed some of the benefits of doing this. So now in this lesson, it's time to see how putting our data into a table affects our formulas, because this is something that does tend to throw beginners off. Now, currently we're looking at the employee data, this is the same data that we used in the previous lesson, but I have made a little change here. I've actually taken this data out of the table and we saw how to do that in the last lesson. So we still have these blue banded rows, that's absolutely fine. But what I want to do now is I want to perform some calculations on this data. Now notice in column I, I have three separate things that I want to find out from this data. And the first one is that I want to know what the sum of all salaries is. So I want to find out the total. Now, of course, I could put this into a table and turn on total row and select sum. That is one way that you could do this. But if you just want to perform a calculation over in cell J3, we could type in equals sum, press the tab key, and we could simply select all of these salaries. So I'm going to select the cell range F4 to F23. Let's close the bracket hit enter and I get my total. And we can very simply check that total is correct by highlighting the salary range again. And if you take a look down in the status bar at the bottom, all the way over on the right hand side, we have our sum total, which is matching what we have in the cell. So that is the sum of salaries. Now, when we double click on this cell to take a look at that formula, we are using cell references in this formula, F4 to F23. And so far in this course, that is pretty standard. That's what we've been using for all of our formulas. Let's take a look at the next one, average job rating. So this time we're going to type in equals. We're going to start to type average, tab key to select it, and we want to find the average job rating. So for this one, I'm just going to select the job rating column. You can click and drag or click in the first cell, control, shift, down arrow to make your selection. Once again, if you take a look at that formula, we're using cell references G4 to G23. Close the bracket, hit enter, and we get an average job rating of 3.4. The final thing here is to simply do a count of employees. Now I want to count on one of the text columns. So I need to make sure that I use count A. Remember, count will only count numerical values. Count A allows us to actually count the employees. So we're gonna use cell references again, C4 to C23, close the bracket, hit enter, and it's telling me that I have 20 employees in this list. So that was all fairly straightforward, pretty much stuff that we've covered before. But the thing to note here is the point that we're using cell references in all of these calculations. Let's put our data into a table and check out how these formulas change as soon as we do that. So I'm going to escape out of here. I'm going to delete out all of the calculations we've done so far, and we're going to put our data back into a table. Hi from everyone at Simon Says It. We hope you're enjoying this training lesson. Please like this video to show your support for the channel. If you want to take your learning further, earn a certificate for this course, and gain access to over 200 courses ad-free, click up there and go to simonsaysit.com. Thanks for watching and back to the course. So I'm clicked inside it. Let's press Control T, keyboard shortcut, Yes, my table has headers. Let's click on OK. And my data is now back in a table. The first thing I'm going to do is name my table. So let's go up to the table design ribbon all the way across to the properties group. And where we have table three, I'm going to call this employee data again. Let's hit enter. So now that my data is in a table, let's try and perform these same calculations in column J. So I want to work out the sum of salaries. So we're going to start off the same equals sum, press the tab key, and I want to sum the salary column. Now, once your data is in a table, remember, you can simply hover your mouse over that salary column until you get that black downward pointing arrow, click once, and it's going to select that whole column. But take a look. This looks very different to when we were using cell references. The formula now says employee data, then we have a square bracket, salary, closing square bracket. So what exactly does that mean? 
Well, these are what we call table references, and you'll see them when you're trying to perform calculations on table data. Instead of using the cell references, it uses the table name and the column heading in the formula. So you can see there it's saying, OK, you want me to sum the salary column in the employee data table. That is exactly correct. I just need to close my bracket, hit enter, and I get exactly the same result. Once again, we can check it by highlighting all of the data and glancing down to the status bar. Let's do it again. So equals average. This time I want to find the average job rating. I'm going to select the entire column. We get the table name, employee data, followed by that column. Let's close the bracket, hit enter and we get the same result. Now it's also worth noting that you could type in equals sum and you could simply start to type in the table name. So if I start to type in employee data, it comes up in IntelliSense underneath. I can press the tab key and then I simply need to open a square bracket and it's going to list all of the columns in that table and I can simply go in and select. Now I actually don't want to do a sum here, do I? I want to do a count A. So let's do that again. I'm going to go for employee data, open the square bracket, and I want to do a count of the employee, so I'm going to count the employee name. Let's press tab to select it, close the square bracket, close the round bracket, hit enter, and we get our results. So this is really the point I wanted to illustrate in this lesson. Don't be thrown off by the fact that when your data is in a table and you're putting together a formula, you're going to see table references as opposed to cell references. And table references are actually pretty good. If you send this spreadsheet to somebody else, it's a lot easier for people to understand what your formula is doing because we have meaningful labels in there. We can see that we're doing a sum of the employee data table, the salary column. Sometimes when you just have cell references, it's not quite so obvious. So that's how table references work in formulas as opposed to cell references. Congratulations on reaching the end of this training video. Continue your training in Excel 365 for beginners with the next video in the series by clicking over here. For more related training videos, click over here to watch this popular playlist of free learning resources. To see more videos like this one, click below to subscribe.